guys, how's it going? My name is Michaela, and I got a brand new camera, and I love the quality. I feel like the video is just a lot more like crisp and less distorted and easy to watch. So I'm gonna make a quick and dirty video. These are five quick tips um, to help improve you learning your second language, whatever that language might be, be it English or Japanese or French or Korean or Chinese or Italian or Spanish or I don't know. When I was younger, I used to teach English to a class of elderly ladies who were about 60, 70 years old. Every week they would come to my class and they would love speaking English and they would tell me all the time that they loved learning English because English keeps the mind young. When you can speak two languages, you also adopt two different ways of thinking, two different ways to express the same thought or idea, and you open yourself to different ways to express the same thought and idea. And if you can get to a point in your life where you are speaking two different languages every day, it's a really good workout for your brain. It's very healthy for you. So for tip number one, because learning a language is a lot like exercise, it is vital that every day you give yourself a bit of a warm-up or at least a review. And this isn't like school. You don't need to sit down for an hour and do an entire lesson. It's important to keep everything in the front of your mind, otherwise you're going to forget it. So every day, no matter what, even if it's just writing your own name on a piece of paper or writing a sentence you learned the previous day on a piece of paper or saying something out loud, make sure that you are using the language at least once a day. It's really important when you learn a new language to utilize every aspect of your body and mind and Sometimes that means speaking out loud even if you're not talking to anybody. So even just waking up and maybe reciting a phrase you learned the previous day, it'll help a lot. Two, immersion is definitely the fastest way to pick up a new language, but for those of you who cannot travel across the world and live in the country that speaks the language you want to learn, I know that not everyone has that privilege, what you can do is start surrounding yourself with that language where you live. Our PlayStation is in Japanese and I'm pretty sure that if you live in other parts of the world you can change the language of your PlayStation or your smartphone or your computer to the language that you're learning. So if changing the language on your electronic devices doesn't really suit you, um, that's okay. What you could try instead is picking up magazines or books um, written about things that you're interested in in the language that you want to learn. For example, I really love cooking and so I have a ton of cooking books and they're not necessarily about Japanese cooking, they're about cooking all over the world, but they're in Japanese. So even if you're not able to, say, travel to Japan to learn Japanese or travel to China to learn Chinese or travel to Korea to learn Korean, that's okay. By making several changes to your environment, you can immerse yourself in a second language in your own home. Tip number three. I have to kind of eat my words here because in an older video I once said do not learn Japanese from anime because nobody speaks the way that they do in Japanese cartoons. When learning a new language, it is really important to expose yourself to um, the speaking and the rhythm and in that sense I think sure watching anime or cartoons is a great idea if you're like me and you're really into music what really worked for me was learning the words to Japanese songs just by singing along to these songs whether I understood the grammar or the meaning behind the words or not I was getting my brain and my mouth accustomed to a foreign language and the way that it sounds and the rhythm and the way that things should be pronounced and if music's not your thing, expose yourself to movies, um, TV programs, even cartoons, and try to pick up little phrases or um, copy what you hear them say just because it helps make your mouth move. I think developing the motor skills to speaking a second language, like getting your mouth moving, is really just as important as every other aspect of learning a language. So if you're at home alone and you're watching TV and they say something, try saying it back. Try saying it the exact same way that they do. Tip number four. One of the most effective ways to learn a new language is to find the language's relevance to you. So what works for me um, even now after 10 years of living in Japan is um, sometimes I'll, I'll see a word or a sentence and I'll ask myself, okay, I know how to say this in English, so how would I say this in Japanese? What would I call this in the language that I'm studying? If you don't know, look it up and write it down. Say you've learned how to ask where something is. In Japanese, it's doko desu ka? Maybe I'm thinking, hmm, where's the cat? Ah, neko wa doko desu ka? Chinamini, neko ga koko ni imashita. Ron-kun desu. Ron-kun wa anmari doga ni deru no ga suki janai desu. Bye bye. I'm pretty sure he hates me. Finally, tip number five, study buddies. You need a study buddy. And if there's nobody in your immediate area, nobody that you know personally who is on the same language learning journey as you, join an online community. 
and try to meet people with similar interests and similar goals, not only because you can motivate each other, but you can also have a little bit of competition. For me, I'm super competitive. Seeing the progress of other people really motivates me to try harder and kind of progress more than them. I'm terrible, I know, but I think a lot of people are like that. So by getting study buddies, you're you're suddenly holding yourself to a different standard and you're kind of checking everybody else's progress to see if you are up to speed. And I think it's a healthy way to push yourself to keep improving and motivate yourself to study a little bit every day. There will be times where you feel like you've plateaued, like you've reached a point where you're not really learning anything new and nothing's really improving. But I also think that plateauing just proves that you're getting comfortable with the level that you're at. And because you're comfortable, you don't feel like you're actually getting any new information. And that's not necessarily a bad thing. It gives you a moment to kind of take a breather. The important thing is don't give up. The important thing is that you just keep at it, keep at it. Even for people like me, I've been living in Japan for 11 years this summer and there are words that I encounter almost every day that I don't know. And that's okay, like it's okay not to know everything. It's always going to be a work in progress, um, but it gets easier. You know, learning a second language has opened my life up to plenty of new opportunities, plenty of interesting people, and it's taken me across the world. And I'm sure that if you keep it up, you will see the same results. So that's it for my new camera video. Um, if you are looking for a language buddy, leave a comment and maybe, you know, you can make some friends or um, keep each other in check because I know that a lot of people watch my videos because they're interested in Japan and the Japanese language or they're interested in English and making um, English speaking friends. So this is a perfect opportunity for you guys to find friends and buddy up. Leave a comment below and see who you can meet. Alright, talk to you soon. Bye.